the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather this morning to remember and celebrate the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan River, the question is, do we really fully understand the power and significance of our own baptisms? Do we really understand the extent of the gift that we have been given? Some years ago, I remember having a conversation with Henry Laudit, who was at that time the Bishop of Georgia, about an experience he had at a gathering of bishops. At that time, he had just returned from the United Kingdom and the Lambeth Conference, where every 10 years, bishops from the 34 provinces of the Anglican Communion gather for several weeks to study together and to pray together and to work together. Bishop Loudon shared that it was incredibly powerful to be in the midst of almost 800 bishops from around the world representing something like 80 million Anglicans across the globe. He said that during his time at Lambeth, the bishops were divided up into smaller working groups where you would meet every day to pray and to work and to plan together. These working groups were designed to be very diverse, reflecting the diversity of the Anglican Communion with English and European, American, African, and Asian bishops all mixed together. Over the course of the conference, the bishops would discuss many things. Frequently, they would engage in theological and ethical debates. One morning, Bishop Laudit's small group was sitting together discussing issues of human sexuality. The conversation was quite heated but there was one African bishop who remained very quiet. Finally, after about an hour, he was asked for his opinion. Quietly and in halting English, the bishop explained that while these subjects were very interesting, such debates were a luxury for him that he could not afford. He had other issues on his mind. When he was asked to elaborate, he said that as a Christian bishop in a small but very fundamentalist Muslim country, he had to decide whether or not he could condemn his people to death. Many of the local people, he explained, were coming to him wanting to be baptized. Farmers, poor people, peasants living in the rural villages, he said they brought their entire families. They proclaimed their faith in Jesus Christ and they asked the bishop to baptize them. However, the bishop said he knew that to do so might be a death warrant. In his country, it was illegal to become a Christian. You could be born a Christian, but you could not become a Christian. If someone was caught converting, they were often condemned to death for blasphemy. To baptize an entire family, he said, might lead to all of them dying for the faith. And the bishop said he was not sure he was prepared to create martyrs. His people knew the risk of what they were asking for, he said. They were not dumb, they understood. And yet they came anyway. They knew the cost and the power of their baptism. And they wanted it anyway. I think that is an amazing story. So strange, so foreign to all of us in the Western world. We baptize babies by the dozens. And the most stressful things we ever have to deal with is Will the baby cry? Will I be able to get together the baptismal brunch following the service? How will two sets of in-laws get along with one another? 
For many of us, baptism is this lovely and sweet ritual, harmless, benign, and seemingly without lasting consequence. We take it for granted. If you are a Christian, baptizing your baby, especially in our Episcopal tradition, is just something you do. I fear for some it means little. I mean, think about it. All of us remember when we graduated from high school or college or graduate school. We may not remember the exact day, but we know it was May of 82 or June of 95. All of us remember our wedding anniversaries, or at least some of us do. (laughs) But how many of us know when we were baptized? Especially if you were not baptized as an adult. We can probably guess by adding a few months on our birth date. But however, have you ever seen your baptismal certificate? If you have, is it framed and hanging on your wall like your college diploma or your law school degree? Do you even know who it was who baptized you? Do you understand yourself as fundamentally different because of your baptism? Baptism is just so easy. It seems to have such little cost, and therefore it can appear to have little value. Quote, I think more of the place where I was baptized than the cathedral where I was crowned. For the dignity of a child of God, which was bestowed on me at baptism, is greater than that of the ruler of the kingdom. The latter I shall lose at death. The other will be my passport to everlasting life. End quote. Louis IX, King of France. What we do today at this service and the dozens of times in this cathedral every year has immense implications. Whether we know it or not, whether we claim it or not, our baptisms signify that fence-sitting has ended. The freedom of uncommitment is over. Wondering where you stand in life, confusion about who you are and who directs your life are no longer ambiguities. When we are baptized, Jesus Christ and his way of life become part of who we are. In baptism, our allegiance allegiance is made public and solidarity with others who profess Jesus Christ is made manifest. Our baptism is our epiphany. It's our showing forth in response to God showing forth in Christ. It means we belong to something bigger than family or even national alliance. We have been claimed as Christ's own forever and given an invitation to a new life. There's an old story about a little girl who dressed in her Sunday best and who was running as fast as she could one Sunday morning trying not to be late to Sunday school. As she ran, she prayed, Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. As she was running and praying, she tripped over the curb in the front of church and fell, tearing her dress and skinning her knee. She got up, brushed herself off, and started running again. As she ran once more, she began to pray, Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. But dear Lord, please don't shove me either. (laughs) 
One thing we all need to remember about our spiritual lives is that God never shoves us. We are loved and we are valued beyond measure, but we are never, ever shoved into anything by our God. For many of us, the power and personal implications of our baptisms will sit and wait like an unopened invitation to the greatest of adventures. We can forget that this sacrament ever took place. We can minimize its significance in our own lives and reduce it to a nice cultural event if we want to. God never forces anything on us. Rather, Christ always stands beside us, inviting us to open up this invitation and to claim our true identities. We are the children of God and members of the body of Christ, and we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit in our baptisms to live in ways we never imagined possible. There's an old story that many years ago, a lady in a faded gingham dress and a man in a well-worn suit walked into the office of the president of Harvard University. The couple didn't look like much and the president was a very busy man. The couple explained that their son had attended Harvard for one year and that he had loved the university. However, the son had been accidentally killed and this couple wanted to erect a memorial to him somewhere on the campus. It is said that the president of Harvard Harvard treated them rather dismissively explaining that while he was very sorry for their loss, the university was not in the business of putting up statues for every person who attended Harvard and died. While the couple tried to explain that they were not thinking of statues, the president brought the meeting to a close and politely sent them on their way. At that point, Mr. and Mrs. Leland Stanford returned to Palo Alto, California, where they established the university that bears their name, a memorial to a son that Harvard seemed to not care about. Be careful not to overlook the gift that lies right in front of you. Be careful not to decide too quickly that what was done for you in your baptism is of little consequence. Sometimes the greatest gifts are free and much grander than we ever imagined possible. Atheists would say we leave this world much the same way we came into it, alone and anonymous. The gift of baptism says otherwise. Baptism says we are named and we are known by God and we are loved and we are empowered to live a life as a disciple of Christ. And we are promised that in the end, not even death can separate us from the God of love. Amen.